This is video six of Revit to Real, and what we're going to do in this particular video is look at um, what I call the slicing and dicing method, which is one of the really cool features that Revit has in terms of using the section box to output a model um, in various pieces that then we can put back together as a physical model. So one of the most important things to do with this is, you know, there's going to be a little bit of complexity with this. So I want to have a good naming convention. I want to be able to keep things well organized. So in the previous video, we divided this up into quadrants so that we knew that our 16th inch model would fit inside of our build space. And what I'm going to do is name each quadrant really, really quickly with the model text tool. So that's under architecture, model text, and I'm just going to number them one through six. So there's my number one. I'm using the model text because it actually is um, some 3D geometry and I know that's going to show up in every view all the time. It's not an annotation that if I um, duplicate a view without detailing, without duplicating, without detailing, or um, if I switch to a floor plan view, something like that, that's, that um, particular n uh, numbering sequence is going to show up everywhere. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this and then edit the text to edit three six five and four. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six. And yes, I just realized that I numbered those from right to left, which is kind of weird. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, it's, it's, at least I'm giving some level of organization to it. I suppose that's kind of what really matters. So I'm going to start um, by turning on the section box tool. And um, I, I want to keep this default 3D view intact, so I'm going to go ahead and say duplicate view. And again, I am going to give um, this particular view a prefix um, when I name it. And I want to, it's simply so that they're organized uh, in my 3D view list. So I'm going to call this ZZ export, and then this is quadrant one. So that's where I'm going to start. This is ZZ quadrant one. Or I guess it's not a quadrant, there would be four. I don't know what to call six squares. We'll just leave it as ZZ export one. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and um, isolate just that corner using those grid lines that I set up early on. So I'm going to start that first by turning on my section box tool. Not the sun path tool. That was fun. Section box. There we go. And the first thing that I need to establish is the base height. And when doing a 3D model, a lot of times, it depends on what I want to show the client, um, a lot of times I'm not even worried about finishing the overall model. Roofs, uh, ceilings, all the formal qualities. A lot of times I simply want something volumetric and physical so that the client can see what's happening on the inside in something other than a drawing. It gives them a different read on things and allows them to really understand the space and what's going on. So the first thing I want to establish is a universal height across all six boxes that I'm going to be sending to the printer. And what I want to avoid is something like this where I might have a really thin sliver of wall left over a fairly long span. So if I pull that up just a little bit more, leaving something like that, I know that uh, an FDM printer like the Rep2 is going to struggle with that kind of distance, especially if that's a really thin little piece right there. So, um, you know, just a little bit lower than that. I definitely want it lower than the second floor. Definitely want it lower than that. So I'm going to go ahead and lower this down just a little bit more and then sort of evaluate everything here and make sure I'm not 
sort of messing anything up because I want this base height to be the same for everything at the beginning of this model. And right now that's looking pretty good. So the next thing I want to establish, if I look at an elevation view, again this is kind of sloppy how I put this model together. I've got all of this wackiness sort of happening below. I want to go ahead and bring the base height up to uh, essentially as, as minimal as I think I can make it. Because I don't want to waste a lot of filament and I don't want to have a lot of fill going on at the bottom of this, um, at the bottom of the print. Um, just a lot of wasted time and a lot of wasted filament. I just need a nice thin base. I think I can make that even a little bit thinner than what it is. And on a project like this, um, you know, this has a pretty consistent um, base. There's only three feet of fall across the site, and those three feet are pretty much being made up by this little ramp that happens right here. So I feel pretty comfortable with that. I'm not slicing into the floor anywhere. That looks about right. Okay, so what I'm going to do next with that is I'm going to go ahead and begin setting up my quadrants at this point. Well, again, I keep using the word quadrant. Um, hope you know what I mean. Each one of these six pieces. So um, ZZ Export 1 I know is this piece right here. And what I'm going to use is my top view. And unfortunately the section box won't snap to those model lines. Um, so again this is sort of um, get it close and be happy kind of method but um, the precision of it doesn't matter if your technique is correct in terms of how you set these up and well, that'll make sense here hopefully to you in just a second I'm going to slide that in this and this so you can see what I've got is that piece isolated and that is ready to export. And when I run the export as an STL file, this piece is all that's going to go. So I know in this view, I need to hide that curtain wall piece. I need to hide this curtain wall. That door. and this door. Now these smaller gaps like this, um, we've just had great luck uh, printing them in PLA um, on the Rep2. No problem at all doing a shorter span like that. Um, usually works just perfectly fine. So that piece is ready to go. And so the next step is to go ahead and duplicate this view again. And I'm going to rename this. Again, I'm going to keep the ZZ prefix so that they're well organized at the end of my 3D views. So this is ZZ export 2. And from this view, I'm going to grab my section box and I'm going to take this edge of the section box and push it all the way across so that I'm left with just essentially a two-dimensional piece. I'm going to deselect my section box, rotate it around to the opposite side, select my section box again, and this time when I pull away, I will pull away from that exact point and that's why matching these up perfectly with those model lines doesn't matter quite as much. Let's go ahead and rotate this so that north is up again. Line this up approximately with that model line again. And so I know I need to do some prep on this, hide some windows, things like that, but I want to show you that trick one more time. Or actually, we'll, we'll go through it and make all six of the different views here really quickly. So again, the trick is duplicate view. Rename. Export three.
and line out my section box with my model line. So I have the first three views ready to go. And so now what I want to do is expand each one of those views again in this direction. So what I'm going to do is I'll just go ahead and start with export three, duplicate, rename. So this will be ZZ export six. Now the organization and, and sort of the systematic process of doing this is really important for a neat model when it comes together because I want to make sure each edge is consistent all the way across. That's why I went um, one, two, three first and then I'm going to work each one of those views um, away. So in other words, I wouldn't want to copy this and move from here across again. Uh, that's not going to be as precise as going to view two duplicating my view rename so this is view four wait not four that would be five okay I'm going to squish my section box and then pull it out All right, and now I just have one more view to go. So that'll start from ZZ export one, duplicate view, rename. That is view four. Last time, at least in terms of the horizontal plane, squishing the section box. and getting everything lined up. Okay, so let's go ahead and work really quickly on this video of just roughing out the process of moving this particular model to MakerWare. So I'm going to go ahead and launch MakerWare and while that's launching I'll go to my add-ins, STL export, and then save and we'll call this Camino export one for view one so again I want to keep the naming convention intact in terms of relating these views to my models I need to open up my Excel project again here my little scale project that I have going that I've referred to in other videos so I know I'm making a 16th inch model this time. So we were previously on our massing model. We were working at a scale of 40. This time we're working at a 16th of an inch. And this is the number that I'm paying attention to. Um, so I know when I bring this into MakerWare, I'm going to use a scale uh, factor percentage of 158.69. And again, that's the formula that I'm using right there. Uh, to come up with that. So it's referring to my scale factor going from one to one down to a sixteenth and then converting feet to millimeters. So inside of MakerWare I'm clicking add Camino export one moving this to the platform scale 158.69 and that object is ready to print now, the one thing, I will take that back. It's not what I need to print. Probably don't want to print out the number one with it. Should probably hide that back in Revit. And now the simple philosophy with this, the pattern with this, is we're going to move vertically, and we'll show this in the next video. As we move vertically, we'll be printing out the roof and the walls coming down, and then we'll be gluing those pieces together.